Hey y'all, welcome and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be covering a topic that has been incredibly, incredibly requested on my TikTok. And I'm assuming most of you guys are from my TikTok, so you probably already know what this is about to be. Also, if you see scampering around in the background, this is Pete. She's the real star of the show, let's be honest. I want to start a new series on here talking all about folklore and more specifically I want to tackle Appalachian folklore at least first and then we'll start branching. I have had some personal creepy experiences living here and I really did not know up until a few years ago that what I was experiencing is pretty common in this area and I want to talk about it. If you see me looking down at all, notes. This cat is definitely my cat. She functions off of attention. Like, I'm pretty sure if she didn't get it, she would wither away. I'm not gonna test it, but you know. The folklore that we are gonna be tackling today is the folklore of the Wendigo. And I say folklore very lightly because, like me, it's not just folklore to a lot of people, it's life. So let's get into it. So, the Wendigo is based primarily... The Wendigo is primarily found in indigenous cultures, but its variations of it are sprinkled everywhere. I have found as I've researched, as I've talked to people, there's variations everywhere. Um, <clears throat> so one of the rules, spoiler alert, is if you hear someone calling your name, don't answer it. Um, there was a variation of that in my household. It was don't answer your name if it's not that person calling for you because it's the devil trying to get your soul. So same rules, same basic things, but here's where they stem from. Okay, so let's get right into it. What is the Wendigo? And there's different variations of it. So let's just cover all of our bases or at least the bulk of them. So what does it look like? Again, depends on who you ask, but the creature itself is supposedly very tall. I'm talking 15 feet tall definitely not human. It's very thin. It has its skin pulled taut over its bones. So it's just this very pale gray skin and you can just see all of its bones and it's 15 feet tall. I have seen different things about the eye color. Mostly what I saw is either sunken in or a red color or sunken in and red. Honestly, the depiction that I was getting, minus the wings obviously, sounded a bit like the Mothman, which we will also be covering here, but I think it's reading the red eyes that made me think that, I'm not sure. So you may notice I said it's actual form. Why did I phrase it like that? Well, it can take on many forms, and the ones that it's most likely to take on judging by past occurrences is either a deer or a tree type thing. Like, can it look like things that it is not? It can take voices and sounds of things as well, which is horrifying. And it sounds a bit like mimics and or doppelgangers, which we will also tackle here. So it can copy people's voices. It can copy laughter. It can copy a woman screaming. It can copy a baby crying. And it's not actually those things. It's this 15 foot tall gray foot creature, which is so scary. Many believe that if you are spotted by this thing or it senses you around, it will take the voice of someone you know and trust or do something to get your attention. Um, that's where the baby crying comes in or the woman screaming, but it can also take people familiar to you to use voice, to use voice. Um, it can even take your voice. You can hear yourself calling for you, which cannot be fun. These creatures do hunt, but not in the typical sense. Most wildlife, you know, they will stalk, they will hunt you. These don't do that. They lure you in with looking a certain way and sounding a certain way to get you to trust them to come closer and then they attack. They don't really go out and seek you in the traditional sense. They make you come to them, which I honestly think is worse. Do not let that fool you though. While they do not typically seek you out and chase you, if you trigger that hunting instinct, they will. You will get chased. Okay, so let's move forward. You've fallen for one of the tricks or all of the tricks and you've been captured. What is this thing going to do to you? Spoiler alert. Again, it depends on who you ask and what cultures you're looking into to see. But from the most part, here's what I've gathered. I'm using natural light right now and the Amazon driver is just at my my window. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna leave. Don't mind me. Why is this happening? What did I order from Amazon? This is the longest time of my life. Is he gone? He is not gone. He's hunting my package in his car. Oh dear God. 
why am I so awkward? Oh, Jesus, God, Lord, help me. I should go get that package, but I'm gonna finish this first. It's fine. All right, let's get back. Okay, you've fallen for the tricks. You've gotten captured. What happens now? Okay, while a lot of the variations of things that happens are different, depending on who you ask, I can assure you that none of them are pleasant. But we're gonna talk about them. Some say that it will just eat you. You are a midnight snack and you are gone within seconds. You are, you are just a food. And then it gets darker. It gets darker than it eating you. Some believe that it will fully possess you. It will, you will fully become it. And there's different ways that that can happen. Some believe if you've been around one for too long or been around someone that's possessed for too long, if you, um, how do I say this? If you treat another person like a snack, you can become one. Um, different things like that. There is a very real sickness that has been studied that goes by the name of Wendigo psychosis. What is that? Let's talk about it. From what I researched, it seems a lot like cabin fever. Um, as I was reading about it, I got hints of the mental images from The Shining of Jack completely losing his mind. It was basically really common when you were stuck in your house all winter long with nothing to do, no electricity, nothing. You just by yourself and you go crazy, essentially. Here are the symptoms for Wendigo psychosis. Loss of traditional appetite, nausea, vomiting, and just all around, you don't act like yourself. Soon you believe that if you are suffering with Wendigo psychosis, you start to believe that the people around you are not people at all and they are just a snack for you. And there's been actual cases of this happening and they're documented. This has occurred in the United States and it has occurred in Canada and indigenous people would try to cure people that suffered from wendigo psychosis. This dates back hundreds and hundreds of years. Now I am talking about things that happened years ago, but do not let that fool you because they are alive and well here today, many people, including myself, believe. They are primarily found in the Appalachian Mountains around the East Coast, some say around the Great Lakes. I don't believe that they are just in those spots. I think they can go wherever they want. While this may be their preferred home, I think they can be anywhere but not everyone thinks that. So if you live somewhere else and you believe you've had an encounter with them, you are valid and it is incredibly possible, to me at least, that you did have the encounter you think you had. Now, if you don't believe in this stuff, that's absolutely fine. And this could be just for entertainment purposes, but if you do believe in it and you wanna learn how to stay safe in the Appalachian Mountains, around the Great Lakes, around the East Coast of Canada, you just, you wanna be safe, I'm gonna give you some warning signs to look out for. Some say you will smell something foul. It will be the stench of death itself. It is disgusting, it is rot, it is decay, and it is so strong. I, spoiler alert, have had encounters with these things. I've never had a smell like that happen, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't. So strong smell. That also goes with like the um, lore of demonic entities as well. If you smell something bad, it's usually not a good thing. I don't know how to really describe this. I've went through it myself and you probably have too. If you are outside and things suddenly feel off, pay attention. Um, nature's gonna warn you if something weird is happening. So if it's a windy day and the wind just suddenly stops and it is still, there's no sound, nature's noisy, something's happening. So keep that in mind, look out for weirdness outside, keep an eye on nature, see what she's doing, she knows. If you hear someone calling for you and you can pretty much guarantee that no one is calling for you, do not answer. Do not answer calls. Do not answer screams. Do not answer laughter. Do not answer crying, especially coming from the woods. That is unsafe. Supernatural aspect aside, that could be a mountain lion. You cannot do that safely. Um, if you're worried about someone's well-being, call law enforcement. Don't go out there by yourself. Just don't do that. That's super dangerous whether you believe in the supernatural side or not. And the reasoning that you don't want to answer things, I know that seems like a weird rule to have, but if it is calling to see if anyone's around for a snack or to snatch you up and just use you as a meat vessel, you're telling them exactly where you are. Someone calls for you and you're like, yep, there you are, they found you. They can lure you in, they can come get you, they can do whatever you want, they know you're there. They know you're there and you are now its. 
and at its mercy. If a deer or a tree looks a bit off, don't engage. Just get out of there calmly, coolly, collectively, and just, just go somewhere else. So here are little tips and tricks just to keep you safe. So if you are in an area like the Appalachian Mountains or really the East Coast in general, if you are outside at night, just be aware. Try not to be if you can help it, but I'm not dumb. We all go to bonfires. We go out at night. It's fine. Just be respectful and be aware of your surroundings. Never whistle outside at night. Um, it can bring bad luck. That is a superstition in itself. But also, it's kind of like answering calls. If something is there, you're telling it exactly where you are. So never whistle. And I already said, you know, don't answer crying or calls that you hear coming from the woods. If you're worried someone's in danger, if you get law enforcement, they're more equipped than you at that point. Um, but don't ever answer that stuff. Don't go investigate it either. Don't look into the trees for too long. You'll see things that you shouldn't see. Just mind, mind your peepers. Mind your peepers. If you answer a call that you shouldn't, if you run, um, if you do any of the things that you're not supposed to do, just calmly get out. Um, if you've already ran, I, I would probably say stick to that. Um, <laughs> you've already done it, so just get out safely. Um, but... As a rule of thumb, never run from these things. That is what triggers their hunting instinct and you could be chased. So stay calm, cool, and collected. That goes with driving a car as well. If you're driving a car, maintain the same speed. Just get out of there. That car's not going to stop it. That's just a mini obstacle for this thing at this point. Now, I had an experience outside. And if you've seen my TikToks, you've heard the story a million times. So you don't have to listen. But if you haven't, I went outside one day and I took my dog out to use the bathroom. And things went weird. Um, the wind was blowing, cars were driving, and I live on the edge of the of woods. There's woods behind my house, and um, my dog got really weird. If the wind stopped blowing, cars stopped coming, it was dead silent. And my dog was on a leash, obviously, and she takes off running towards the door. She's on my arm, I follow, I run. Um, I watch my door. My door has a screen door and a wooden door. I watch the wooden door part of it open. So I open, I like open the screen door, I run inside and I close the door behind me. And as I close the door behind me, I hear the screen door. Okay. Everything's already shut. Something hits my wooden door and the screen door so hard that pictures fell off of my wall. Ever since that happened, I have seen weird deer. I just, I can tell that I'm being followed by this thing. I've had weird things happen. I've seen we weird deer. I have, um heard my name being called from the forest I've heard laughter I've heard crying from those woods and from other woods and that's why I don't think they're you know pre prevalent to one area because it's following me and that's why I stress these rules so much rules just things to keep you safe on my TikTok because it happened to me and I don't want it to happen to you but that is my personal story I've had weird stuff happen too they're all on my TikTok or I can tell them all here whatever you guys want but um I know if you live in Europe right now, you're probably breathing a sigh of relief because there's just just giant body of water protecting you. But I do want to remind you that Pangea once existed and the Appalachian Mountains are partially in Europe as well. So you are not safe either. Anyways, sleep tight. Um, thank you guys for watching.